this given set. Okay, so let me call this set a name. We'll call it E. And uh, here's the theorem. Uh, oh, so I, let me just make the definition that so that we have this here. So a set is an open. A set a U is uh, open in Y. And the book says open relative to Y. You can that's you often hear that. Uh, if is this what it means? So this is a definition. It's a definition if, right? It's not the it's not a conditional if. If every point of U is an interior point of uh, of uh, U. And of course, the, the, the key difference here is that the notion of interior means using neighborhoods in Y. With me? Okay, using those kind of the funny half possibly half uh, cut off disks, right? OK. So that's no, this is no different than the definition you had before. We're just paying attention to where, what, what set we're living in. So openness uh, matters. Uh, it, the, 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 the metric space matters for the, con for the concept of openness. So here's a theorem. E in Y in X, suppose E is a subset of Y and Y is a subset of X, like that picture. Then the, the claim is E is open in Y if and only if E is Y intersect G for some G open in X. It's a very nice criterion because it, it allows us to pass between sets, uh, open sets in one space and open sets in a bigger space. First of all, do, do you agree? Does this seem believable? It's an if and only if. I claim one, one direction. So here's a proof idea. One direction is, it should be fairly obvious. Um, would you agree that if you have a set G, then its intersection with Y has got to be open in Y? Why? What does it mean to be open in G? Well, it means that every point has a neighborhood around it in X that's also in G, yes? So in Y, what's the neighborhood you're going to use? The same one, but just restricted to Y. Yes, Lindsay. Uh, so to say something interior point, you're referring to a particular set. So the, the, so the claim is that if X is interior to G, then it's interior to E using possibly cut off neighborhoods. Is that, does everybody believe that? That's basically using this correspondence between neighborhoods in X and neighborhoods in Y. So the proof idea in the backwards direction uh, uses the fact, use the fact that uh, if uh, N sub R of X is uh, in G, so take a neighborhood around X in G, then um, uh, then n sub r sub x in y is the neighborhood. Oh, maybe I should say intersect y is a neighborhood of x in y. So th if this would witness the fact that it was interior, this one would witness the fact that it was interior to y. Uh, to, to, to E and Y. It's a neighborhood of X in Y and in G and in, in E. Happy?
That's that direction. What about the forward direction? Help me. If a set is open, look at the red set here. That means that around every point, there's possibly, there's a neighborhood, but possibly a cutoff neighborhood that's in E. Can you think of a set big G that would also then be open? Suppose you have a bunch of cutoff neighborhoods. What could you do to those neighborhoods? Include the stuff that, that it suggests, yes? And then what will the set G be? Well, what is it? Define G. Yes, union all these neighborhoods. So if I missed this part, include it. So then why is the union of a bunch of open balls open? Well, it's by definition, because every point now has a neighborhood. It shows that it's interior. OK, great. So in this case, um, if uh, E is open in Y, E open in Y means every point X has a neighborhood, n sub bar of X, that's completely in uh, Y and in E. But then the same neighborhood in X can be used. And I'll take the union of all these for all the points. Which points? Oh, so this, this r depends on x, n sub r sub x. x for all x in e. Then this in x is an open set, is open. So we'll call it g. And that completes our argument. OK, any questions about this proof? Basically, the, 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 the upshot is I can tell when a set is open in a smaller space just by seeing if it's the intersection of something from the bigger space Okay, that's also open. Okay, so what we want to do next time uh, is I want to show you then that if you, if you say a set K is compact in X, it's equivalent to say a, a set K is compact in Y is equivalent to saying a set K is compact in X. So compactness really doesn't depend on the metric space that you're in. To say that a set is small really doesn't depend on the space that you're in. Okay? And then we want to show some other analogies with finite sets. So that's next time. Okay, stick around if you have questions.